So let's do an example that deals with static and kinetic friction. A 20 kilogram box is resting on a horizontal surface. The coefficient of static friction is 0.5 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.3. We want to determine the force of friction acting on our object if A. We apply a force of 25 newtons, B. We apply a force of 97 newtons, and C. We apply a force of 100 newtons, and in this case we need to find our acceleration. So, let's begin with A by drawing our force diagram. So, we have our object and we have two opposing but equal forces that are acting along the y-axis. So, that means our box will not move along the y-axis. What about along the x-axis? Well, to determine whether or not our box actually moves, why don't we apply a force of 25 newtons, we want to determine the maximum frictional force due to static friction. So, the maximum static force is equal to, well, we take our coefficient of static friction and multiply it by a normal force, so 0.5 multiplied by 20 kilograms multiplied by 9.80 meters per second squared, and we get a maximum frictional force of 98 newtons. So this is the maximum force due to friction that will oppose our motion. Any force equal to this force or smaller will not create motion because the frictional force will oppose it. So since we apply a force of 25 newtons, that means an equal but opposite force of 25 newtons will oppose this force. So that means our frictional force in part A is 25 newtons. What about if we apply a force of 97 newtons? Well, notice this force, even though it's larger, it's still not large enough to create motion because if we apply a force of 97 newtons and the maximum force of friction due to static friction is 98 newtons, that means it's still not large enough and our frictional force will, will have the same exact magnitude but will point in the opposite direction. What happens if we now apply a force of 100 newtons as in part C? Well now notice 100 newtons is larger than 98 newtons and that means this force of 100 newtons that we apply onto our box in the x direction will begin motion. Our object will accelerate and now static friction will become kinetic friction because our object is no longer stationary, our object is sliding. So. Uh, the sum of all the forces acting along the x-axis is equal to the positive force minus the negative force. So we have 100 newtons that we apply along the positive direction in the x-axis minus our kinetic friction. So uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force equals 100 newtons. So we plug in our values and we see that 100 newtons minus the force of kinetic friction, which is 58.8 newtons, gives us 41.2 newtons. Now, if this is the net force acting on our object along the x-axis in the positive direction. So we must set it equal to mass times acceleration. So we bring over the mass and we find that our acceleration of the object when a net force of 41.2 newtons is applied is equal to 41.2 newtons divided by 20 kilograms our mass and we see that our acceleration is 2.01 or approximately 2.1 meters per second squared.